Ed, eh? he asks if a story's a story lead is always the best start. And I just saw Saba's ears perk up angrily as she comes <laughs> up with many examples where it's not. But no, all kidding aside, I will let Saba answer because we were talking a little bit about, you know, anytime something's like no, the best. No, I mean, using... Stefan's on the call. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I'll answer it, Saba, and then I'll um, I'll see what you think, right? But my answer is no, it's not always the best. I think that it is often very effective to tell a story to capture people's attention. Um, I think story leads generally, if you have a great story, you know, when we're talking about long form, um, I think, you know, telling that story is generally gonna do the best, but even then the mistakes people make is they don't relate it back to the consumer. They don't relate it back to the prospect answering what's in it for you. They don't do promises. They, they kind of just go, hey, here's a story about something shitty that happened to me. And then it's like five minutes later, you're just reading about some person's laundry list of problems and you're like, why am I you know, doing this, right? So um, the, the story lead I like is more of like tease some big emotional story, pain point thing that, that the prospect can relate to. And then be like, you know, but fortunately, has a happy ending and uh you know like because i discovered this and that and i'll share that and it's something you can do and then basically just tease the story go into promises call out the pain point all the other stuff and you kind of loop back to the story with the background story um versus just here's a long ass story to start with the letter um but there's also plenty of times where a story is not the best if you have a really interesting mechanism um if you've got really interesting curiosity um you know maybe this the the leads around sort of a unique discovery of a, of a you know new or novel way of, of doing something. Maybe it's around, maybe your leads loaded with social proof. So um, I think generally story leads are good, but I think you know, having curiosity-based leads, having um, you know direct promise leads are sometimes the best. I mean, if we're talking like a challenge funnel, free push shipping book funnel, things like that, it's like really just going with the direct promise of, hey, like here's the benefits you're gonna get, um, you know, by looking at this copy or even sometimes by buying the product if we're not really long form. Um, so it really is contextual. That's my answer. But then of course, Saba, feel free to, to add. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And it is, it does depend on the offer and the niche. Like, you know, I've noticed a lot of cold traffic offers where it's, you know, low ticket cold traffic offers don't really do well with story leads because these are very quick sales and you just need to, um, you basically just need to deliver the, um, you know, deliver the offer. So as much as you can hype that up and how exciting it is, and you want people to make a very quick decision. Whereas story leads, you know, they can do well for, um, <clears throat> you know, very competitive markets like supplements, you know, can do well. Like if you're doing a weight loss and you definitely need something that's different than just, hey, here's a really good fat burner or whatever it is. Um, you know, that's where it, they can be very powerful. But as Stefan said, though, one of the key things, even when you're using story leads is you have to relate it back to the reader. So even though you might have some like crazy, dramatic story, you have to find a way to put the reader into the story and say things like, you know, and as you know, when you have this problem, you experience this, 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 like you have to bring them in. Cause I do see, I see a lot of copy like that where there's a really strong story, but there's no way that it's connecting with the average reader. Right. Yeah. People fall too in love with the stories sometimes. And they're like, Oh, the story's crazy. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty crazy. But again, somebody who's busy in the middle of their day clicks on your ad randomly. They're like, I mean, just think about your friend, the person you're like, hey, you know, um, oh, how's your day going? And they're like, not good. And then they start, you know, telling you all the things that are wrong with them. And, you know, you're like, all right, man, this is a bummer. I want to get the fuck out of here, right? You're like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man. That's, that's, oh, sorry to hear that. You know, um, yeah, you know, if they're like, oh, well, it wasn't going good. Actually, um, you know, I nearly died like last week and it was crazy. But the, what's weird now is I'm actually doing better than ever. Um, this is all because of like one change that I made in my life. You're like, oh, what's that about, right? Then you're curious because now it's like going back to like, there's like a promise or some solution or breakthrough or something exciting. Um, but if they're just like, here's all the shit that's wrong with me. Yeah, you, you just want to bounce, right? I mean, maybe maybe I'm just an asshole and other people don't want, they want to sit and listen to people's problems for extended periods of time. Um, but my, my suspicion would be that I'm, you know, that this isn't what makes me an asshole. You know, I'm sure other things make me an asshole. Um, <laughs> That's my thing. Um, no, I think that's key. You have to be, you know, when you're telling stories, you can make them super dramatic, but you have to be a good storyteller and know where your, your the listener or the reader or the viewer is is at, right, with you. Because it's easy to get really carried away with the storytelling part and then forget that somebody <laughs> needs to actually now process it and then make a decision eventually. Yeah. 